All right, anyone brave enough to read their poem aloud? I will. Oh, Lord, here we go. I hate the way you talk to me and the way you cut your hair. I hate the way you drive my car. I hate it when you stare. I hate your big dumb combat boots and the way you read my mind. I hate you so much it makes me sick. It even makes me rhyme. I hate it. I hate the way you're always right. I hate it when you lie. I hate it when you make me laugh, even worse when you make me cry. I hate it when you're not around and the fact that you didn't call. But mostly I hate the way I don't hate you. Not even close. Not even a little bit. Not even at all. <laughs> uh, wonderful. I'm a gentleman. You can't fight in here. This is the war room. You can't handle the truth. King Kong ain't got shit on me. Make my day. Let's take me, boy. Let's brag. Fuck you. Everybody on? Good. Great. Grand. Wonderful. Hey, hello. Welcome to Facing Off. This is a podcast where we take two movies that we find to be similar <laughs> in some way and we compare, contrast, and rate them. I am Gabe. And. I am Nick. Nick, you're just too good to be true. Oh, okay. I can't thanks, take man. my eyes off of you. Wow. You'd be like heaven to touch. I want to hold you so much. At long last, love has arrived, and I thank God I'm alive. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you, even though I took my eyes off you to read that. Was that Shakespeare? Yeah, something like that. Frankie Valley. <laughs> what it do, man? What up, sir? This is our first episode in a while that we're doing in person. It's really Breaking weird. all protocols. Uh, we're still stay-at-home orders, but you know what? We share so much saliva in our daily lives, oh. man, that we had to have a podcast. We have been basically alone for so many weeks that we're probably okay doing this. Oh, very alone. Very alone. Very alone. Uh, I'm not, well, I'm not 100% alone, but you are. But besides being alone, uh, had a really good birthday week. Uh, oh, Nick, yeah. Nick and Julie uh, surprised me with food, wine, their company, and a movie. And we watched She's the Man, and it was just a delight. And our germs. Um, and our germs. and uh, Or and their germs. And it was really nice, <laughs> and I appreciated it. And then uh, also, uh, other Nick, uh, past guest of the episode, yes. Yesterday, um, kind of treated me to a whole like birthday um, drinking thing, Cute. and then he even got me an ice cream cake that he Aww. almost forgot that he got me, and it was super <laughs> delicious. And now I feel fat and disgusting. <laughs> uh, but thank you, both Nicks. The two Nicks in my life are just so important to me. Um, ooh, another shout out. Uh, well, uh, two shout outs, shout out to Julie, your fiance mm -hmm. and shout out to Maddie, both of whom suggested that we do these two movies. Oh, She's yeah. the man and 10 things I hate about you Two Shakespearean high school rom-coms. But Maddie, um, said when I let her know that we were going to do this immediately, she said, OMG, yay, I contributed. I definitely don't have any special insights. LOL. But the humor in both those movies is always surprisingly good. And if you could mention that little BB G JGL actually holds up on the charisma scale next to Heath, it would make my day. Well, hopefully we made your day, Maddie. Yeah. Um, and then shout out to Shakespeare, who I am deeply involved with. Involved with? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. One character says that in, in 10 Things I Hate About You. Oh, okay. Now I understand better. Sure. Yeah, so we're doing these two movies because they are both uh, rom-coms of the um, sillier. Order. No, oh. the sillier order. Yeah, uh, and they are both very loosely taken from uh, Shakespearean comedies. Yeah, um, I just wanted to shout out before we get into the synopses my own haircutting ability, but only the left side of your head. Yeah, Nick did half because of your my head. Died. It was pretty fun. I was. He wasn't paying attention to it, but the whole time I was just 
going through the lines of Peter Postlewaite in uh, uh, the town. It was weird. But it was I weird. I was really but just trying to make sure that your hair doesn't look completely Hopefully we get ridiculous. the second half of my head after this. Yeah, I'm really hoping that that happens. But here we go with the synopses. We are doing these two movies for the reasons I described, and this is the plots. This is the plots. These are the plots. This is the plots. She's the man derived from Shakespeare's Twelfth Night is the story of Viola, sister of Sebastian, who dresses like Sebastian to infiltrate his school, join the boys' soccer team, beat her old soccer team, and along the way fall in love with her teammate who thinks that he loves a girl named Olivia, who thinks that she loves Viola, who is dressed as Sebastian, who actually went to England to rock, and then he comes back, and then he falls in love with Olivia when he's back. Wow. And that's the mind fuck. (laughs) Who made this movie? Christopher Nolan? (laughs) Basically. Ten Things I Hate About You, derived from the extraordinarily misogynistic Taming of the Shrew, is about Cameron, the new guy at school who falls in love with the popular girl Bianca, whose father won't let Bianca date until her older rebellious sister Kat will date because he's a psycho. But she won't date because she does not date. But she does date a guy named Patrick, who (laughs) may or may not be a felon, and may may, may or may not have eaten a duck whole, except for the beak and the feet. Who only starts to date Kat because a handsome guy who loves Bianca was paying him. But then Patrick actually falls for Kat. But Bianca grows to despise the handsome dude and falls for Cameron, who helps Patrick tame Kat's tempestuous nature. Mmm. True that, dude. (laughs) True that. Sick. Well, uh, you know what? Nick and I are so excited because we're deeply passionate about both of these movies, and it's going to be so fucking fun. (laughs) So let's uh, let's actually break them down uh, Uh, based on our five categories. We take each of our categories, and we give them a rating uh, on a scale of one to seven, one being lowest, seven being highest, four being middlest, and the one with the hairy chest. We are going to use our uh, comedy rom-com yeah. uh, categories, cats, as we'll call them today, in honor of... Kitties! Uh, no, not like that. Like, okay. Like Katarina, you fool. Oh, I get it. We're going to use actoring, spectacularity, originality, legacy, and our rom-com specific category, which for this episode will be called Potent Regiment. Ooh. Potent Regiment is a euphemism for a dick that Shakespeare wrote. Fuck, in I love it. Antony and Cleopatra. Bratwurst. Yep. Describes uh, Antony's cock. Pulsing member. As a potent regiment. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, let's kick it off with actoring. Sure thing. Actoring is where we talk about the performances and we talk about how good the acting was and in a comedy how funny the acting was and then whether the directors and writers helped those actors perform at the best of their abilities or if it was noticeably weird. Uh, Let's start with She's the Man. Yeah, speaking of noticeably weird, (laughs) let's talk about Amanda Bynes real quick. Yeah, what did you uh, give it out of seven? I gave it a three. Holy shit. Okay, this is going to be really fun. Because Anne Julie would be very upset at me, but she forwent, for, foregoed. Yeah. For, she did away with her ability to actively argue mm. because she didn't want to join us today. Oh, is that the thing that she didn't want to be, No, you know? she didn't feel passionately enough, I don't oh, think. Oh, sure. Get this. But, um, I mean, I don't think that anyone in She's the Man is horrific, but I don't like Amanda Bynes. Yeah, I just think that if it was like a different actress that Amanda, wasn't Amanda, just Amanda, like, Amanda, 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 Amanda. I mean, like it's obviously an Amanda Bynes vehicle, the movie, but it just doesn't work. I agree. Like, her and her bug eyes can get right the hell out of here, dude. I'm tired of that. Yeah, she is awful and annoying. Her voice changes the constantly. The fuck is up with her accent? Like, where is she supposed to be from? Why it's does just anyone? Like, if this is gonna be your silly movie, and everyone else is going to more or less play along. The actors, I mean, don't make Amanda Bynes such a cartoon. Yes. I get that it's a stupid movie, but I feel like it didn't necessarily need to be a stupid movie, and no one else is acting up the stupidity of the movie except for Amanda Bynes. Yeah. It's like if you stuck a a clown in, like, James Franco's role in Pineapple Express. Or, like, any other comedy. Yeah. Okay. I get that. Like, there's just, like, this clownish character bumbling around. And like it's too much. I get it. Her shtick is like used to be slapstick. Now it's septum rings and 
and conspiracy theories. Yeah. It used to be <laughs> it used to be that her thing was just being clownish and it worked, but it's just weird if you put it in a movie where no one else is acting like a clown. Right. It's strange. Yeah, I mean so she, has she this, like, alone made it a 3 for me. Everyone else I think is more or less fine for what the movie is. Okay. Yeah, I mean she does have this unique comedy style, but that didn't work for me. Okay? It is it unique? Did. I mean, it's like she. It's like it's prepubescent not. Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, I guess that that's probably true. I think Ta- Janet, Channing Tatum isn't very good in it. Like he grew so much as an actor over time. He's actually a pretty good actor now. He's not bad. No, um, no. He does have a. I do have to say that he has a Chelsea uh, Lampart uh, jersey or uh, poster in the background, <laughs> and he could fuck right off with that. I'm talking to you, Simran. Um, he. <laughs> And her ex-boyfriend, he is the star of Step Up, and her ex-boyfriend in it is the star of Step Up 2. And they're both fucking fabulous dancers. Um, I did like the moment where he was like, "Mm," uh, he's like, "Mm -hmm, hear books, or whatever, which was fun. I don't know. I think that Channing Tatum is just average for the movie that it is. It's not supposed to be like... He's supposed to be good in it. You yeah. Know? I mean, they're all playing the part. Like, I actually, like, one person I really like in it, I like the hairdresser, like, her friend, yeah. the hairdresser, when he, like, slaps away the manager's, yeah. like, hand. Um, David Cross is amazing in it. David Cross is David Cross just, like, he's like, I don't care that this movie's shitty. I'm going to come in with a really nuanced David Cross uh, character. Um, I love that they balding? had Vinnie Jones in it. Prime. Vinnie yeah. Jones is the coach. And then the other coach is actually really funny as, like, a super sexist dude. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, oh, like dude, no the reason. actress who played Eunice, the girl with the mouth uh, headgear, yes. like, way over the top. Like, dial it back, Eunice, damn. Yeah. <laughs> dial it back, Eunice, damn. But, uh, you I'm going to give it a fact, two. Fun fact about that actress is that her favorite uh, animal byproduct is cheese. Oh, she does say that, doesn't she? She does say that. Yeah, I'm going to give it a two. I think everyone's doing the right thing. It's just like... In the grand scheme of even comedies, it's pretty fucking awful, awfully acted. I'm just going to centralize all of it on Amanda Bynes. Fair enough. Can't, all right. What about 10 Things it. I Hate About You? Can't take my eyes off of you. What did you... It's just too good to be true. What did you... <laughs> why did you do okay, that? Okay. So this, is, what the, did you this is the part of the podcast where I start pissing off a lot of people that fucking love yeah. 10 Things I Hate About You and hold it as a classic. Listen, I get it. I loved it when I first watched it. It is a classic because everyone says it's a classic. And so, therefore, I have to admit that it is a classic because that's what everyone else thinks. But it didn't work for me the second or the third time, maybe, I guess, when I when I just watched it. I just – it's – I the tone is all over the place and the acting and everything. I mean, I'm giving it a four. I'm going to give it an average. Like, I'm not going to really dock it because I – Personally, didn't really like anyone outside of Heath Ledger. Uh, Julia Stiles was okay, actually. Mm-hmm. And the dad is great. The dad is amazing. I, he Shout out. He's a psycho. Shout out to Larry Miller, uh, the dad, because he is a legend for Max Keeble's big move. He has Just some, a great movie. He has where some he, serious things that he needs to work out with a therapist. Though. I love when he, the daughter is like, oh, no, it's nothing, dad. I'm just going to go have like a small study group uh, with some friends. And he goes, oh, in other words, an orgy. Yeah, like, yeah, he needs to work some stuff out with somebody. Yeah, but it's a hilarious character. <laughs> Here's the thing. I mean, Heath Ledger, always great. He's an yeah. amazing actor. I actually, like, I, I love yeah. all the nuances to his acting and everything. Yeah. But it is so crazy watching something like this and being like, how did anyone ever trust that, that he could be Joker and he'd be that good? It's because his smile is so strange. It's, it, but he's so weird and creepy in the Joker. And yeah. it's like such a different, it's so different from everything else. Um, also, who would be afraid of him in this movie? He's so fucking handsome the and rumors, cute. Dude. Well, first of all, he ate a live duck. Uh, everything except the he beak and the feet. Fucking like I dresses said. like an Abercrombie and Fitch model in a biker bar, and people are like, "Whoa, he yeah, smokes ciggies." Yeah, he got ciggies. into a biker bar at like age at least seventeen. I mean, is he seventeen or eight? I don't know, man. He's a legend. I don't know. I think he's fine. I think he's no. I love. Him. I like. I mean, I gave it a five. Oh, okay, not much more. What did you? What did you four? Four. I See, think it's average. I don't think anything like he's great, but I don't think he's enough to bring up the shittiness of everyone else. Except for, ooh, another person forgot to mention. The guy who plays Michael, um, 
JGL's friend. Yeah. Um, what's that guy's name? David Crumholt. Amazing. Great early role for him. Yeah. I think everyone is solid, like better than average. I, there wasn't anyone in it where I was like, that is terrible. Except for one person. I'll talk about that later. Sick. Uh, but Styles is solid. Ledger's solid. JGL is solid. Uh, okay. Dude. Half and half. Because the first scene with him. He's cute as it, shit. No, but the first scene with him, it's like <laughs> bad acting. Like he had just walked on a set for the first time. And then over time, he is cute and he's and he's believable. He's a believable character. Yeah. Which is dope. I thought it was. I, I like I when mean, he gets really mad at her and then she kisses him. Yeah. I gave it five. I don't it, see too many because the, issues with it. Because I love when you beat a girl into submission and then... <laughs> Dude, I will talk about that later. Uh, we'll get into that. All right. Oh, I got to say Joey Donner as the as the, the, vil, the villain character. Oh, yeah. Joey. One of the most forgettable villain characters in any movie. Fuck that guy. I didn't, th- I didn't find that character believable in any way. I didn't care about him. And I'm so glad I forgot about him. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. He gets beat up at the end. It's all good. Yeah, that's pretty dope. And, and, oh, OG Alice and Janney, too. Yeah. Oh, the English teacher is also great. I, I like yeah, the English teacher. Even though he's exactly three months older than anyone else in his class. I feel like that's what he's supposed to be. It's like strange. a college. It doesn't make it any less strange. Yeah, I'm going to give it a four. It's five from Nick. Uh, all right. Let's move on. You want to do originality next? Let's save that one. Okay. Can we save that one? What do you want to do next? I deep dove Shakespeare into that Spectac- one. Spectacular. Yeah. Hilarity, which is where we talk about the engagement level of the movie slash how funny it was. And it's scientific and it's laughs per minute. It's like how steady, as steadily funny it is and, and then how invested you are in the movie. We could stick with... Uh, ten things? Ten things. Okay. This is where I have a big problem. <laughs> it's where I have some issues too and this is... Yeah, so I gave it a three. Ooh, sick. All right, cool. Because 10 Things has this lull, and I had to ask Julie this morning as I was typing up my notes, like, where is this lull? And she nailed it. She was like, oh, it's when it's when Kat gets Patrick out of detention. Yeah, and shows her tits. Which is a very weird scene because yeah. there is a significantly strange part where she flashes a grown man it also is kind of funny that the detention teacher like takes the guy's weed and then takes some munchies to yeah to <laughs> and he goes i'll later. take those two yeah um confiscating these <laughs> and yeah. these two uh yeah. i just think that there's this there's this like significant dip in the plot of the movie where for a solid chunk of time you're just like floating off in space and then you're like wait what happened to the movie i was watching like what are we doing right like what? What are we doing here? <laughs> why are we? Why are we here watching this movie? What is going on? And that's probably not good that that lull comes at the like central love, like love connections, like main time when they're falling in love. Right. And that's the part that's the least interesting. And that's part. like the rom com aspect of and it. And that's probably not good. But no. I think that's where it is. And there is a significant dip in how engaged you are. Uh, uh, I have an issue with that. Other than that, I think the movie's fine, but I think that makes it below average. So I texted Nick while I was watching it, and I was like, holy shit, this movie sucks. But I was I was mostly joking around. But I almost didn't want to watch the whole thing because I wasn't invested in it early on. It, the second half of the movie is really, like, it's cute, adorable, and it's, like, believable – and they kind of develop it well. The first half of the movie, including some of that lull, just doesn't work for me. Hmm. And I think the other issue is that the tone is randomly slapsticky. And then but the movie itself isn't slapsticky. But there are random things that are put in, like the part when Michael goes off the mountain on his like dirt bike motorcycle thing by accident at the very beginning. Oh, yeah. It's like it's like boom, 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 boom. Yeah, and the he's like falling is a and problem. like Oh man, the score is off. The soundtrack is great. Oh, the, okay. score the score is right. awful. Um, there's like, there's also random like the Jam- the Jamaican kids, the white Jamaican, like not believable. Isn't that the guy that plays not Shaggy? funny. He looks like it. I think. I think it's him, dude. No, because he was kind of a big actor at the time. He was already in Scream. Oh yeah. 
Dude, I think it's him. I don't know. It looked like him. Uh, or the scene where, like, Bianca shoots the arrow by accident into her teacher's butthole <laughs> and doesn't <laughs> react to it. Nobody reacts to it. It's so ridiculous. But the other thing is, like, I feel more invested in Seattle as a city than the movie itself. Oh, Seattle's like, rad. I love it. The neighborhoods are great. That lookout at the very beginning of the movie where the movie starts – I've been to that lookout and it's beautiful. I've been to Fremont, the Fremont Troll and the Gasworks Park as well. But yeah, um, it just makes me really badly want to move to Seattle, and it doesn't make me like really badly want to be in this movie. Like sometimes when I watched like high school rom coms when I was a kid, like I just re- wanted to be in that movie. I don't fucking care about this school. Um, I do. I, I want to say this for the comedy. I do enjoy the crassness of the movie, and like it starts. With, like, Alice and Janney writing an erotic uh, novel and just being, like, she's, like, so inappropriate. And I love some of the humor in that. Incredible. It's really weird that it's on Disney Plus, to be honest, um, because of that. But, uh, yo, shout out to Bare Naked Ladies and Save Ferris, dude. It's been... Oh, yes, we don't know what we should. <laughs> um, oh, I do have to say one thing. The bloopers, China, the Chinese chicken. <laughs> the, the the bloopers at the end, like worst bloopers of all time. Didn't even watch him. It, the, you gotta watch them. They're couldn't, so they're not be funny. Bothered. They're I've like seen the movie before. It's like I, someone I like makes good. like one like minor mistake, and they're like, <laughs> "Wow, we messed up big." <laughs> um, anyways, that's a two. From me out of seven oh, for spectacle hilarity and a three, a three, a more appropriate it's three from Nick. All right, what about she's the man spectacle? Did you take your mite all before this, dude? What? What does that mean? Oh, it's a line from. Oh yeah, it's another misogynistic line, blown or like randomly placed into. Dope. Ten things I hate about you. Can you make sure yeah. the cat takes her mite all before she comes in? Oh, that. To the teacher, and he's like, "Shut up, Chachi," or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I love when he calls him Chachi. She's the man. I honestly gave a five. Whoa. Okay. All right. Explain yourself. It's an absurdly short movie. (sighs) And for all it's worth, it's nice and crisp and surprisingly funny and quotable for how stupid and bad the story writing is. Like, wow. I genuinely was trying to watch it, and you just kept talking to Julie. And I was like, hey, guys, shut up. It I'm was my birthday. It. I was allowed to do whatever it, I wanted. No, it's true. Dude, there's so many quotable lines. Yeah. It is pretty quotable. I don't. No, it's a thing that I know yeah. or whatever. one 800 Biatch, where she goes, bros, bro, brothers, brethren? That's Brother. a solid line. Yeah, that was funny. We've I been love quoting that for years we, without knowing she's it. Got, she's got a great personality, too. Ew. Ew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In man words, it's time to pounce. There's just, yeah. it's like half really bad lines like that one and half ones where you're like, that's not that bad. That was pretty funny. So Layla was like sending Layla, who we mentioned in the last podcast, like was sending a lot of snaps this morning, watching the movie, just like so angry at herself as a kid for ever enjoying it and saying like, all this is really dumb because of Amanda Bynes. And, um, I, I don't know. Like I felt I like, I kind of want to piss everyone off and give a better rating for spectac hilarity because I was more entertained. She's the Man is obviously a worse movie, but it was so much more entertaining to me. And dude, that that length of the movie, it's like an hour and 23 minutes or something. Yeah. Ja feel that it's so perfect. hard. It's perfect for dude, this movie. It's, it's not. It's never boring. No. It's, it's not funny. It's not not funny. No. It's, uh, uh, I actually kind of, there's like one nightmare sequence when she's going, has a nightmare on the soccer field. Yeah. And it's actually kind of dope. Yeah. It's like really well done. There's like I a couple of montages of, and the first one's bad, but the second one's like, oh, this is not bad. It was bad. like a $20 million budget, so I'm pretty sure it all went into some of the like cool moments. Uh-huh. Uh, the part with, um, I can't remember who the guy who ends up with Eunice at the end, but when they start kissing at the end, it's legitimately a hilarious moment. Right. And it's believable. I do want to say this is such a random thing, but why are like clothes lining a person? Like, why is that in so many movies? Cause like literally no one's ever clothes lined like a person, not in football baller. and you wouldn't even do. Yeah. But your arm would be in so much pain. I don't know. Yes. Man. True. 
so random. The physics but of I'm the whole it thing doesn't really quite work out. I'm okay. going to give it a three because if I'm if the grand scale of like rom coms and comedies and high school movies, it's not my favorite. In terms, I was of pleasantly surprised by how engaged I was in this movie. I love that it's five is hilarious. We are going to get so much hate mail. I love it. I love that. Send us your hate mail at Facing um, Off Podcast. Let's do uh, originality. Yeah. Uh, no. Let's do our uh, our rom com category. Okay. What's it called? We're going to call it Potent Regiment. Potent Regiment uh, is a category where we talk about how like how adorable the movie was and how believable the love was and if it took like stereotypes of of romance and couples or if it was actually kind of like well crafted love. I don't fucking know. Was it well crafted or was it well crafted? It was well <laughs> crafted. <laughs> Uh yeah, well, let's stick with she's the man since we're that on it. Terrible what did joke. you give I'm that sorry. potent regiment? So if we're just going, how potent is that regiment? Is it flaccid or is it erect? <laughs> yeah, um, fully, dude. There are so many Shakespeare penis references. Yeah, just in general, my favorite one was potent regiment because they're talking about Anthony's cock and he's general because mm. they're like, how potent is his regiment? It's like, ha, it's Real, his, his ween. Talking yeah. about his ween. And it's the general or whatever. But there's so many good ones. Yeah. Oh, man. I almost called this, uh, this was just the one that made the most sense. But we called it hashtag pulse in the past. Yeah, we're going to change the name of it all the time. Yeah, if we do rock comms all She's the, time. the Man is the dumbest love story. <laughs> yeah. Twelfth Night, I'm going to get into this later. Okay. She's the Man <laughs> is just a dumb love story. Duke and Viola fall in love because they are sports together. They are. They do sports, and then they're just in love. Like I don't who's understand. Duke? Is that Channing? Yeah, it's Channing Tatum. And who's Viola? Duke Orsino. Is that? Um, oh, okay. That's Amanda Bynes. Yeah. Okay. They fall in. I had to ask. No, I actually. Okay, I'm gonna disagree with you slightly there because they fall in I love think because of the sports? they're the only them together. They're the only part that's even slightly believable in terms of romance because they were roommates and they, like, were friends, basically. And they got to, like, learn everything about each other. Right. And, and they, that does and, fall in line a bit with some of the Chan themes. And Tatum's, of, like, vaguely of gay in it. Twelfth Night, too. And that also falls in line with some of the themes in Twelfth Night. Yeah. But, I mean, Sebastian, Viola's sister, who she's pretending to be this whole time. Brother. Brother. Falls in love with Olivia. That's the problem. In a record amount of time just a few seconds yeah it was pretty dope but just because she likes the way that his sister is dressed as him yeah but but she doesn't look like him she looks like she's doing that she looks like she's dressed as ellen degeneres cosplaying as abby wambach yeah okay i like that i don't understand it yeah, I don't get it either. It's and just it, too silly. I mean, the Olivia thing is she's just, like, so dumb. And, like, I, I, there's something off about that girl. But the other thing is, like, all the love and the romance stuff is kind of, like, told to us. It's like, not really a They basically go, they love each other because we're telling you that they love each other. There's not, it's not really believable. There's not enough rom. Are you giving it a one or a two? I gave it a two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to give it a one. Uh, I just don't think it's that good of a romance story. This is such a not good episode, but I love it. Um, <laughs> They're just not great movies. This, this is this like is we we made this podcast so we could like really critically break down movies, and this is just nonsense. And I love hey, it. Hey, you're breaking yeah, this down is what we ten things, do. and I do not agree with you. I don't All right, think well, let's talk about ten think. things I hate about you, um, Potent Regiment. I, I actually didn't give it back. I want to hold on. Before we move on, I think that there are parts of She's the Man that are redeemable. It is goofy and slapsticky, and there's a nostalgia factor for Amanda Bynes there, but it's just not romantic. It's not a rom. Except for calm. Toby and Eunice at the end. The character's That's name is adorable. Toby. I just remembered it. Nerds yeah. need sex, too. Just the way that they kiss, though, is so. They just start kissing. He's like. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Right. 10 things for, for me was a five for a second until I started to think about how lame Patrick and Kat's love story is. Wow. Give it to me. And then I put it down to a four. I am much more interested in the love story between JGL and Mm -hmm. Bianca. That is a much more satisfying, like love story. The other one. uh, Okay. (laughs) The love between Patrick and Kat is sad and kind of creepy, but it's not nearly 
as sad and creepy as the love between Petruchio and Cat in the play. Oh, okay. so they they made Petruchio. It, yeah, it's Petruchio, and then it's. I'm they so make mad it, that they switched it to they Patrick. They make it Patrick. Yeah, he should have been called Petruchio. Yeah. It, they managed to turn like a notoriously misogynistic story into a slightly less misogynistic story. For sure. It's not very cute, and when you really think about it, and it's very boring. So, so I actually, I, four. I think I like mostly agree with you because I think the JGL and Bianca, like them as a, they were cute because they're both like adorable and kind of like innocent, um, and I liked like they were believable, but I didn't really care about any of that part of the movie because I think Heath Ledger was so good that I'm more invested in what's happening with Patrick and um, Cat. What, cat um i think it's just i just don't see why no other girl would want patrick i mean heath ledger is so yummy and i mean it's explained was, to us was so yummy it's, R. A. Oh, it's explained to <laughs> Probably us isn't that in his current state didn't need to do that <laughs> did not need to do that uh <laughs> oh man uh, i don't know what i was gonna i'm going say. to hell for sure i don't know what i was gonna say now oh it's explained that he's just terrifying he went to jail Allegedly, dude, he, he's so he ate a whole duck. Everything he's except so the beak frickin', and the feet. He's so freaking cute in it, and he's wearing like I, I, he looks like an Abercrombie model. He doesn't look like someone scary. His motorcycle doesn't even look scary. No, he or doesn't look car, scary. Right? Yeah. But the rumors are scary. Um, how do you I, eat a whole duck? I think yeah, I don't know. That's pretty impressive. Sautéed, butter, mm. uh, baked. Mm. I don't know. All right, in a soup. Cool. Uh, duck soup. As confit on top of fries at a f- fancy Con- restaurant. Confit. You guys remember restaurants? Confit. Yeah, restaurants used to be pretty cool. Remember gathering? Uh, Ledger's Charm brings together, <laughs> like, the emotional appeal of the movie comes in, like, Le- Ledger's Charm. And I and I mean, the can't take, your, uh, take my eyes off of you scene is classic and lovable and adorable. Yeah. And that's, like, top five rom-com scene ever, and that kind of brings up the romance level. Iconic, yeah. Um... Another movie where a side romance is almost cuter than all the other ones because Michael and Shakespeare hooker chick, um, Kat's best friend, who's up, who's involved with Shakespeare, her and Michael get together, and it's like a really cute moment at the dance when it happens. It is. And it's really believable, and I love that. And David Crumholtz is the man. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give it a five. I'm going to stick with – I'm going to give you – I'm going to give Ooh. it slightly higher. Look at because that. Because I'm, I'm going to pull some tricks here today, dude. All right. Let's talk about originality. Originality is where we talk about the creativity of the movie, where it stands out in its genre. Um, did it need to be made, especially if it's adapted from some other source material? How clever was the adaptation? Nick, hit us with your 10 things I hate about you, originality. Okay, so <clears throat> before I get into both of these, I want to use this category to nerd out on Shakespeare. Because... Boo, boring. Used to, I do love Shakespeare. Used to do theater for a long time and <sighs> really loved doing Shakespeare. I mean, all right, cut the pod, cut it. Uh, <laughs> this is our deepest con- like one of our better connections in an episode between two yeah. movies, because if you think about the source material, it gets even deeper. So it's an interesting pair because taming of the shrew is Shakespeare's most openly misogynistic play. That's the one that, um, 10 things I hate about you is based on. Yeah. Literally, sure that. Petruchio, Patrick, tortures and gaslights Cat into submitting to him in that play. It's taming of the shrew. He literally tames Katarina. Oh, yeah. Like he he like withholds food from her because he says like she's you're too good to eat. He basically tortures her and gaslights her into You're loving him. You're too good to eat you. Most openly misogynistic. Can't take my mouth off But on of the other you. hand, Twelfth Night is very much, well, I mean, it's probably still misogynistic because it's Shakespeare and, I mean, it's like the 1600s. What are you going to do? But it's a very complex representation of gender. Like, you're tackling homoeroticism, openness between men and women have when you're talking within gender, like how you and I are probably more open than if there was a, like if there was a woman in the room, we'd be less open. It yeah. tackles that kind of social Whoa, norm. It's the opposite, in a way, of Taming of the Shrew. So it's kind of a cool dynamic that yeah. works here. But here's the problem. 
both of the movies are just super dumbed down, unoriginal ideas or versions totally. of the Shakespearean plays. So you have this opportunity to dig into some really cool stuff, and you don't do it. Yeah. If you have Amanda Bynes just clowning around being weird. Yeah, she's a clown. Didn't have to be that way. I just want to keep pointing this out. It would have been a better movie. Doesn't need to happen. Didn't need to happen. Yeah. It didn't need. It didn't need. But to we're be talking about movie. ten things I hate about you. Ten things I hate about you. That's good though. That's a good analysis. Like, those. like I said before, if you take something that's openly one of the more disturbingly misogynistic, famous works of art, and you make it just a tiny bit less misogynistic, you haven't really done anything because it's 1999 when you made this movie, right. not 1669. Like, mm. you didn't really accomplish anything by making it slightly less misogynistic. There's no original ideas in there. Right. Yeah, I, I I just I gave them I gave it a three. I could have given it less. It's just not original. Like, good job for making it slightly less creepy. Like the whole thing is still everyone's just like. Yeah, I actually don't think it added. I don't know much about the story, but it didn't feel like it added much to the story. Like Clueless, I think really adds a lot to Emma, and it like kind of nails what Emma is, from what I understand. But. I don't know. My issues with 10 Things I Hate About You come more into, and I talked about this with Mean Girls and Clueless, like how believable the high school scenes are and like the characters themselves in terms of the writing of all that. I think this is possibly one of the least realistic high school movies I've ever seen. Like, I, I, none of it was believable. Uh, when Michael is showing him the school, it's kind of like in Mean Girls when they're going through each of the like cliques. And there's like a group of... There's a group of at least, like, 12 white kids that are, like, Rastafarian. Yeah. That literally has never happened in any high school ever. I no. promise you that. There wasn't work. even more than two in a high school. Um, I, I mean, the Jamaican kids. They, but there, it was kind of funny when the, when the uh, teacher, the English teacher, is saying something. And they're like, that's right, man. And then he's like, don't even – you guys keep your mouth shut or whatever. Like, yeah. don't even get me started with you. And he goes – no problem, mom. I just, uh, <laughs> dude, I fucking cringe at the whole party scene. When they were when the, there's like a hundred kids storming down the mountain into the house and they're all like and like nineties music is playing and everyone in the background is dancing. It's like it's basically like here's a studio executive trying to tell a bunch of like twenty year olds, like, hey, we got an idea for you. We're going to create this party, and it's going to be really popping. Everyone's going to be dancing in the background, so it's really believable. I don't know. I hated it. Um, I just think that, yeah, I kind of like that Dude, there was scene, that random scene realistic. with those two, original. The two kids with the, like, the hats on, those, like, cool oh, hats yeah. with the cigarettes and the, and the sunglasses, like, bobbing their heads. I was like, why was that in the movie? What joke was it's that? It's like a bunch of Disney Channel... I'm giving it a two. Fuck this movie. Jokes. It's unoriginal. <laughs> you hate it so much. I don't hate this movie. I think it, like the re- that's why I'm giving it more for actoring and uh, potent regiment. I just think it's like... I think it's a solid rom-com in terms of like the acting and how believable the romance is. I think it's an unoriginal movie and it's not enjoyable to watch for me. For you. Okay. Which is shitty because everyone loves it. And I, I'm going to get so – Maddie and Layla, if you haven't turned it off in disgust or, – or Julie, if you haven't turned it off in disgust, <laughs> I'm sorry. This is just my opinion, dude. All right. I think that she's the man is also a three. I think it's equally unoriginal, although there are some more – like I, there's just so much more they could have done with this movie that it could have been original and it bums me out. Um, that it's the way it is because Twelfth Night is a really cool idea, uh, like has a lot of really cool themes and none of them are in this movie except for like mild homoeroticism that's like not touched on. Like yeah. you took a cool idea, one of Shakespeare's more complex plays and you made it a movie about joining a boys soccer team while poorly disguising yourself as your brother so that you can beat your and old And for that soccer reason team? alone, I'm giving it a seven out of seven. I'm kidding. Oh my keep, god, keep you scared me. <laughs> I just think that that's like, dude. If you're gonna spin Shakespeare, I don't think I can't think of a less original way to spin it than that. 
So I gave it a three, but I'm honestly, I, I don't know why I didn't give it a two. I'm giving it a two, just the same as 10 Things I Hate About You. I think 10 Things I Hate About You is a better movie. I've said that multiple times. I just think, like, honestly, if I'm talking about believability in high schools, I found these high schools to be more believable and the kids to be more believable besides Amanda Bynes. Um, <laughs> I don't Who know. Who is clearly showing Cleve in one scene in a restroom and they don't even go like, are those... Do you have, you're not a, huh. They just go, yeah, you, you're in the bath. You can leave the bathroom now. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. It's weird. Oh, I, man. yeah. Let's talk at length. Let's spend the next like 15 to 20 minutes talking about that final goal in that soccer game. <laughs> I'm serious. No, I'm uh, it is, dude, the fucking final goal is one of the most preposterous sports moments I've ever. It's like more preposterous than all of the Air Bud movies combined it is into one. A, a, a marvel. It's like a PK that gets blocked it and then is, she jumps. It. It's. Have you seen the movie Shaolin Soccer? The laws of physics have never been broken. Uh, have you seen the movie Shaolin Soccer? No. It's it's exactly like Shaolin Soccer, except for it randomly comes in the middle of it. There's a movie called Shaolin Soccer? It's, I love Shaolin Soccer. It's I gotta great. get into that. Shout out to all my Shaolin Soccer fans out there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Also, they wear face paint. I've never, ever seen anyone wear face paint in a soccer game, ever. I'm it's sorry. Good. It's all good. Uh, it's all good but here's, a, here's one, my main point, and this is why I'm not giving it a one. And honestly, why I almost respect it more than 10 Things I Hate About You this movie's not trying to be anything more than it's trying to be. It is very much supposed to be a stupid movie for high, middle school to high school age kids. It's supposed to be goofy as hell. It's not supposed to be intelligent. It's not supposed to be uh, some kind of classic in terms of like everyone's like, oh, this is one of the best rom-coms ever. It's exactly what it wants to be, and it, it's nothing more, nothing less. I appreciate that. That's original. Respect. Two. Out of seven. All right, let's finish it off with Legas, Le, Legacy. Legacy. This is where we talk about where these movies stand in the history of movies. And uh, if things, like how well things aged, especially with comedy, like if there are some things that make you cringe over time. Let's start with She's the Man, Legacy. Go ahead. I just don't think that anyone cares about She's the Man, except for the nostalgia factor. Yeah. If you stan Amanda Bynes, like if, you, if you're an Amanda Bynes stan... You got to do some reading up because she has lost it. Yeah, she's she is gone. Uh, I gave it a two. I don't think there's much of a legacy. It's got like a 46 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It made like 12 million dollars at the box office. It made a lot. It was like number four when it came like first. But this was... movie's not made for critics. That's kind of no. my last point. I just don't think that. I mean, what was the audience? Score? So it made 57 million. Oh, it did. Off of off of 20 million dollar budget which is preposterously high for the type of movie it is. Could have been done with, like, five. Uh, I, but the, the thing is, I think it had more of, like, a VHS DVD yeah. thing afterwards. That's, like, what it's... Which goes I mean, into the gross. It's just not as much. Um, I, I give it a two. I just can't get over the idea... Like, I know, I know you're not going to try and make, like, this amazing adaptation of Shakespeare's work, but, like, what an uninspired like way to do this and that's kind of its legacy yeah i guess i'm giving it a three because if i look at the audience scores which i think are more suggestive of of a movie from like this i mean 79 percent from audience is like fucking crazy high on rotten tomatoes and uh, 6.3 on IMDb is is good if a movie is over six it's a fine movie which is just crazy um, I mean, I, people didn't, love I don't this movie. dislike the movie. There are some people that really love this movie. I mean, Julie is one of them that like, well, like, because it's like a nostalgic thing. Yeah. It's, and it is funny in certain ways. I, I don't think it's aged very well, but I don't ever think it was good. I don't think it was ever purposely good. No, it doesn't have a lot of the like odd misogynistic sheen that, that 10 things I hate about you has. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even like, I didn't mind why I thought it was going to be way worse. I did throw my hat down multiple times when we were watching because I just like doing that. I'm an actor, okay? Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I'm going to give it a three. I think it has enough of a legacy. Like, it, this movie's just never going to slip away, and I think it's slightly below average because people fucking love this movie and watch it all the time. And I, it's, it's not good. No. But 
I don't know. Maybe I'll move it to a three. All right. Or well, two ten two. things I hate about you. I gave a five. Same. Um, it's just so well liked. I think like we gave the same scores that you thought I was gonna. I don't think anyone is arguing that it's elite among rom coms, but it's like the next level down in terms of iconic flavor. Like yeah. it's it's like the next tier. Um, it exists in this weird time in between '90s rom coms and 2000 rom coms, and I just see it as like a funny blend of them because it was in '99. Um, but it's for sure misogynistic and kind of gross, and barely better than Shakespeare's version in terms of how, like poorly it treats its female characters that's fair he just i don't know like they are counterculture individuals cat and patrick at the beginning of the movie and there's nothing wrong with that and then at the end they just conform to societal norms which i guess is the theme of of like taming of the shrew is like is like uh complying with societal norms which is the opposite in twelfth night yeah and, like, so I guess it's true to the theme, but, like, I don't know. I, mean, I give it a five. It's got a legacy. I, I just don't understand why. It's not for me. I get, Yeah, I, that's, that's like, exactly what it is for me. I mean, I gave it a five. I think it has a legacy. Like, people, it, it is a classic, and I recognize it as a classic. Just didn't really hold up for me, and I think it's a little overhyped. It is, it is one of those nice blends of, like, critical response and audience response are both, like, yeah. decent. Um, 7.3 on IMDb is just preposterously high. I'm, I'm sorry. I understand why people it. like it though, man. It's yeah. not like, I don't know. It definitely brings a sense of nostalgia and it worked for the period. I mean, oh, nineties prom dances led by a ska band. That's fucking sick. That's um, iconic. Is it how we miss you. So, uh, I just am more impacted by other high school movies before it. And I like a movie like clueless, which is around the same time, like 10 times more. Sure. Um, I like that there's this one line, and I wanted to know if the legacy of this is fr- is in the office. But there's the like, everyone's either overwhelmed or underwhelmed. I just want to be whelmed, and yeah. I feel like that's where Michael Scott got the like I'm a little stitious thing instead of superstitious. Might um, be, and that's hilarious. Then it has a great legacy. For it's that. got some, yeah. Oh, I got something that didn't. There's a couple things that didn't age well for me in terms of comedy. There's one homophobic line, I think. But I couldn't tell. There's a part where they say, um, uh, when they're convincing, when JGL and David Krumholtz are convincing Heath Ledger to do something, they say, we're your guys. And they hold each other and they go, but in a strictly non-prison movie type of way. (laughs) That's a gay thing, right? (laughs) I think so. Okay. And then... (laughs) <laughs> I got to say this, and this is, this is me overreacting to nothing, but he says he lived in Australia until he was 10 to her, and she goes, with the pygmies? You know what? That's fucking wrong. The pygmies aren't from Australia. And this is highly disrespectful because she's probably referring to aboriginals. And that's one of the most disgraceful genocides and displacements in the history of mankind. And fuck her for that. (laughs) Like, what an innocent, in quotes, joke that just... Fuck this movie. Cut the pod. Cut the pod. Cut the pod. Uh, yeah, no, that's it, though. I think it's a five. It's above average. It's just some things brought down. one 800 Biatch. Yeah, let's, let's add these add up. Add these up, baby. All right, hold on. My ten things I hate about you adds up to a twenty, and my she's the man adds up to a fifteen. I'm at an eighteen for ten things I hate about which you, which gives ten things I hate about you a thirty-eight and out then, of seventy. Wait, what did I go? Did I say one for hashtag pulse or uh, uh, or potent regiment? I think I said. one. I think you said one. Okay. Roll back the tape. Nine. <laughs> I gave it an 11 out of 35. For 26. 38 to 26. 38. Uh, you win 10 things I hate about you. And for everyone, that, especially Layla, who was like afraid that I was actually going to give better reviews to She's the Man because I uh, was being an asshole, I didn't. But I did enjoy myself more watching that movie. <laughs> Maybe uh, it was the circumstance, dude. Maybe it was because you had the first social contact you'd had in like two weeks. I think that's what it was. I was in a goofy mood because my friends visited me. All right, All right accolades Let's section. Let's hand out some accolades. All right, so we're going to give some awards. Uh, MVP. Indecent exposure. Yeah. I, it that, is or, extremely that or effective in both movies. Yep. Yeah. At it the does, end of it She's works. the Man, everyone just 
the plot is all resolved because everybody shows their oh, bits. My- God, there's such a fucking funny line by David Crass that I forgot. Everybody just shows everybody their bits, and then he's it's probably all halfway to China now. He showed his Willis and Doodleberries. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> David Cross. Uh, yeah, indecent exposure uh, with a or with a co MVP of the Bard, baby. The Bard is back. What's the Bard? Shakespeare. Oh, the Bard. Fuck Shakespeare. Um, uh, LVP. Least we haven't talked about her this whole episode. It's Gabrielle Union, dude. She sucks. She is the worst. She is not good at acting. She is not good at acting. She is not (laughs) good at being... She became a good actress later. She is not a good person in the movie. No, she's awful. Her purpose is just the most snaky person of all time, and that's just all she is in it. I'll go with... And she can burn in hell. Yeah. And, uh, LVP. All right. Do you have a comeback hell player is just of the year? A, sauna. a performance that grew on what you. What is your over LVP? The... Is it Gabrielle Union? Yeah, I'll go with that. What was it? I didn't write down anything. Oh, uh, yeah. Comeback player of the year, He's performance that grew on you bitch. over the movie. JGL. I thought he was really bad at the beginning, and he was great at the oh, end. Oh, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Tanning Chatham. All right. Yeah, he does get a little bit better towards the end. Yeah, I appreciated him more by the end. He's a skinny little twig though that or toby toby was kind of funny his toby friend. toby's the one who ends up with eunice at the oh end. yeah yeah uh nah. he was pretty funny the whole way through though um okay what about six man person who did the most with the least viola's brother sebastian no he's barely in the movie he's awful he's, he's not really awful. he's a legitimately terrible actor nah dude the first scene with him is bad yeah, but by the end, it's like, this guy rocks. Yeah, he is pretty cool at the end. He goes I'm gonna to go England, with rocks, comes back, gets the girl, doesn't even have to do anything. Mine is either David Cross or Larry Miller. They both oh, were so, man. both of them were so funny in every scene. David Cross would have been a good one. Yeah, yeah. okay, all right, all right, all-star team, pick five performances that you would face against any movie. Uh, we're, doing, we're doing performances? Yeah, or characters, or okay, actors. Okay. Or, yeah. Heath Ledger. Was, Okay. You have him? Yes. Julia Stiles? I'll wait, maybe. I'll JGL. decide after you're done. Okay. No. David Cross? Yes. And the owner of Cesario's Pizza, the only pizza shop in the entire city in She's the Man. That's true. How much business is that man raking in? So much. Dude, he's just rolling in dough. He's got that doja, dude. He's what? a doja cat. I don't know. That's not a thing. I don't think it is. I just, well, Doja Cat is in two a different types singer. of dough, dude. He's got pizza dough for days. His the name of his movie is a great or the name of his movie. The name of his pizza shop is a great nod to the name of Viola's character in Twelfth Night. Yeah, Cesario. Yeah, it's great. And um, that's where everyone goes for dates in that movie. Let's see. I'll the go. The dude's loaded. What an entrepreneur. Yeah. Okay. I'll go. <laughs> Heath Ledger, David Crumholtz. Uh, David Cross, Larry Miller, uh, yeah, and Julia Stiles. Okay. With a special shout out to that pizza guy for stacking dough. Dude. Uh, oh, stacking d- Oh, double entendre you dough. see where I was going? Yeah, it was pretty good. Okay, uh, do you have a Infant Troop and Award for Dumbest Moment? Everything. It's the goal. No, it's the goal. It's the, it's goal. the stupidest moment. Yeah, you're right. Uh, or David Crumholtz like going it off the side the of the mountain. It defies the laws of physics. She's the best soccer player that's ever lived. Yeah, it's she's shallow in soccer. Um, do you have a best moment? Uh, oof. Can't yeah, take my eyes you know off what? Here. The scene with JGL and Bianca, where she's like, "This guy's not so bad," and then she kisses him real quick, and then they have this like lingering like, "Well, you're gonna go inside now, but you're cute, but you're yeah. cute," and then they just keep like. It's good. Yeah, it's a cute moment. It's I'll do that scene. or they they can't take my eyes off you scene. It's so great. Yeah. Heath yeah. Ledger's awesome. That's a, that's a gimme. Do you have any recommendations of uh, movies that people should watch that maybe they're not watching or anything oh you're watching my, lately? My goodness. Uh, not based on these two Mike movies. My goodness? I really tried to think of a good adaptation of a Shakespeare movie that I really like. I don't think there are any. Romeo plus Juliet. You didn't like that one? I thought that movie's dope. You know, there's a lot of material there, and there's not a whole lot of great... Uh, Macbeth? 
Did you see the Macbeth no, by Justin Kurzel? But I gotta try that. It's like one. impossible to understand because it's Scottish iambic pentameter, but it's like. Yeah. Really beautiful. And also he Ooh. and actually he did a movie that I'm going to suggest which is the true history of or, or the true yeah, true history of the Kelly Gang. Very violent, cool. very weird. It's a very 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 loose telling retelling of uh Ned Kelly, who Heath Ledger once played in a movie called cool. Ned Kelly. Um Spectacular Now is like a it's not really calm. It's more a little bit like drama, but really good high school romance uh, with Miles Teller and Shailene Woodley. I love that movie a lot. Uh, Juana Man. Juana Man, I got to suggest because She's the Man <laughs> is essentially Juana Man, but less funny and more popular. Pretty much. Uh, next week. Music? Yeah. Next week, uh, we're going to do Jaws versus The Meg. In which, honor of the Los Angeles County Beach beaches opening again. Yeah, they were kind open of. this weekend. But, uh, yeah. Are they they're really? Gonna, yeah, I mean, we were out on the beach playing for his day, dude. Maybe they're expanding that opening. Yeah, they're going to allow for more because there was no one there. But, yeah, we're going to do those two movies, two shark movies. One absolutely great two and one I haven't shark, seen that's not great. Shark um, movies. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, you can follow us on social media, uh, Instagram.com slash Facing Off. Clom, god damn it. <laughs> Instagram.com slash Facing Off Pod. Uh, it's been really fun. I've got so many movie recommendations for you guys. It's crazy. And also, I'm commenting on a lot of things. And like, we're trying to get a ton of followers on there. If we don't have a hundred by the next episode, we're gonna kill all of you. Um, Twitter.com. No, we're not. Okay, we're not gonna stop do that. the music. <laughs> no, we're not. Twitter.com/slash. This doesn't mean it. Facing off pod uh, and facing off podcast at gmail.com to send us all of your questions all the things that you're doing during quarantine, what you thought about these movies. If you really hate our takes about 10 Things I Hate About You or She's the Man, I mean, you got no, your opinion holds no merit with She's the Man. But 10 Things I Hate About You, send it. Please do. I, I would love to read all of your deep opinions. Uh, Nick, do you have a send off? You suck. I love you, baby. And if it's great, all right, I need you, baby. To help me walk the night. See ya.